So this is a, a musical sculpture. It's reactive. It reacts to how people behave. And it's a very intimate piece. It's about being very close to the stones. Right from the beginning, I wanted the sensation, and I've done it myself, and I've been very tired, where you can just put your head on the stones and just listen in, and you can just be really close. And that's, the piece is really there, so you can be really, really intimate with these stones and hold them and feel them and see that every single one is unique. The reason this piece exists is because I'm one of those people who collects stones from the beach um, and I, I bring them home as souvenirs and they're in my pockets. But, you know, I, I carry stones with me. So the stones I took from a holiday in Greece five years ago look the same, but they are eroding on, on my window shelf. I just can't see it. And, and this piece is really about the early constant being changed. Even when you can't see that things are changing, they are changing. And actually being here these last few days, I've met so many people who do the same thing. And that's been amazing, the universality of this taking a stone as a souvenir, like taking a piece of land. with this with this piece I didn't write like a 10 page document I actually went and spoke to all the partners so I spoke to Redbridge and I told them um, I told them what I told everybody which is I want to build a kinder egg made of stones and the surprise is the music in South Africa. It's rather lovely that that's where all these sounds come from. I recorded all the rivers there. Um, I recorded the fire. I basically um, broke everything down into the four elements and the fifth element being the human voice because you hear a choir and the choir are the um, members of the Univers University of Johannesburg choir. I think as soon as I knew um, that I could write for those kind of voices and their voices I know um, from my childhood. Um, it actually really inspired me, it really helped me with the piece. really had a desire to get my hands dirty. I had a little buggy which I was using on the ground, um, like a four-wheel drive, I took a spade. Um, I went to try and dig a hole in the Dolomites, which is very, very difficult. <laughs> um, but I managed to make a little short, shallow grave and I buried all the scores. And then I, I went out in the bush and just collected loose quartz and sandstone and I made a tiny, tiny sculpture. It took me all day and it's just so small. And that I called the silent song. Um, it's a small sister, but that song you can't hear, but it contains all the notes. And it contains all the same music that you hear here. And because all the environmental sounds here are from there, they're already there with that sculpture. And I think because I was bringing all that sound here to this space at Fairlop, I sort of made an exchange. I chose Fairlop very instinctively. Um, as soon as you arrive um, through the main gates, you see this lake, and on the other side of the lake, there is only one hill. And as soon as I saw that hill, I felt it was crying out for that, for that stone um, sculpture to be on it. Okay, that's my X marks the spot. This is where it's going, which is actually amazing and exciting to think that um, in a few months' time, it's going to be something really big made of stone um, just there. Nothing is set in stone is presented by the Mayor of London and it's um, commissioned in partnership with the London 2012 Festival. I think Fairlock fits into this idea of, of secrets, of hidden gems um, that even some of the local people don't know. I had quite a
quite a large team working with me um, helping this happen, so bringing my vision to life. One of my partners on this project was the Natural History Museum and um, I actually worked with two mineralogists, um, Chris Jones and Anton Kersley, and it's been a really wonderful experience working with them and having their creative input on the piece and being able to sneak into the labs underneath the Natural History Museum. Yeah. The internal structure of, of the shape of the egg, it obviously had to do multiple things, which was house all the speakers, have places for all the sensors, um, and of course be something that all the stones could be mounted on individually. So it had to be a very strong, very sound structure. It was very important for me to actually really be involved in the selection of stones and this idea of having multiple layers of stones. I actually went and spent a day at the fabrication studio and laid out all the stones in 2D effectively um, on the ground um, in full scale. We actually drew um, the exact dimensions of the piece and then it allowed um, the rest of the team to actually apply what I'd done on the ground and put it, sort of magnetise it back onto the stone. The actual design was, was done very cleverly in that it was built like a cake, so it had layers which made it much easier to install. It also um, was very important to me that there were several layers of stones so that when you're there and you look at it, it gives this illusion that actually the entire thing is, is dense and filled with stone and you, you sort of forget that there must be something holding it all together, which of course there is. What I've found here is that my greatest belief is that people, people, people like the weird stuff. People like abstraction, people like magic and it, those are the things that motivate me to make work. People really res have responded well to the reaction, responded well to the sound and people really have an understanding and appreciation for art and they really want it in their lives and they do think it's worthwhile. And, and for me the piece is already a success because, because I know that I've, I've, um, I've made people happy and I've seen it in their eyes and I've heard them say it and, and so that's the most rewarding thing of all. Mm-hmm.